We're watching True Bros podcast on Dark Team Ghost TV. You're fucking a genius. <laughs> House phone. Oh, okay. Uh, not used often. No, I think most people don't use their house phone. No. Uh, but when I am working during the day, mm-hmm. it's like my office phone. So right. I do use it. It's such a better connection. I'm like, why yeah. am I on my cell phone? I'm down. Hello? Uh, you know, can J- you hear me? Can did you Jerry? Hear me? Yeah. Can you t- okay. All yeah. right. What'd you say but after did, the. Did, did, did you no. what? <laughs> did, what? <laughs> Over talking, they call that, I think. Uh, Over talking. Talking over. Together. Together we are pavilion. Uh, more business cards. How are you? I'm doing right, my man. How are you? All right. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Two Post Podcast, episode 93. Dot. 93. 93. Seven more away. 93 is uh, who? Who's 93? Number 93? I don't know of a, of a popular 93. Okay. Well, Tehran was born in 93. Uh, Souls of Mischief. 93 to infinity. You don't remember those guys? Out of Oakland, California? Souls of Mischief, I remember. Yeah. 93 to infinity? It's the name of the album. Oh, was it? Okay. Yes, it was. All right. Souls of Mischief, 93 to wow. infinity. I remember Souls of Mischief. Boop, boom, bling. Actually, this. they used the Bob James sample. Bling, go, do. Ah. Do, do. Same like that MASH song that just went off. Bob James is I love Bob Job, James. Bob James is nice. I love Bob He's one James. of those guys, we talked about this before, like one of those guys like you've always like heard, but you just don't, like you don't know who he You're is. like, that's Bob James? Yes. Oh, that, oh, I love that song. And you just start hearing all of his shit and say, yeah. like, oh, oh, this one, or oh, that one, oh, this, or oh, that? His catalog is so impressive. I mean, nice. so yeah. much uh, hip hop has evolved from him. Yeah. Uh, actually, the combination of Bob James and James Brown Mm-hmm. Has been almost infinite in hip hop. It's it's one of those things that's just like impeach the president with some Bob James in the back. <laughs> oh man! No. Speaking of James Brown, Ooh. I saw a clip, uh, and the internet has its you know sometimes the internet gets you like why the fuck, and then there's these moments that just say oh man this is this is badass. Okay, I saw a clip. James Brown in concert. Okay. I don't know where, and forgive me, uh, um, where they were playing or whatever else. And James Brown is doing his, you know, his mm-hmm. sweaty, fucking funky, fun. yeah. you know, that stage smells like fucking yeah. grease. Like, <laughs> and, and then he goes, I see you, brother, in the audience. Come on up here. It's Michael Jackson, everybody. And oh, Michael, young Jackson. Michael Jackson. Okay. Yeah, Michael Jackson comes out with his, uh, his Captain Crunch uniform on with his. <laughs> his shades, and I think he was still Black Michael at the time. I think he's, and he just he comes up on stage and he's like, oh, no, no, "Come on, don't don't embarrass me." Mm-hmm. And, he, and then he just gets up and he's like, "I love you," and he's jamming. And, and there, his James Brown band is uh-huh. fucking banging it out. Uh-huh. And he he goes into his. He's like, "Come on, man, you got to do something, man." And he goes into a skit, do, 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 and the band is just. And he's dancing. He starts moonwalking. He starts doing all the shit that he learned from James. Okay. And and it's like a it's like a a a, 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 a moonwalk off. Like okay. They're just going at it. And then he, you see Michael Jackson whispering. He says, "Oh, Michael told me the brother Prince is in here." Ooh. And fucking Prince pops out of the audience. This is some badass footage, bro. This okay. is this this. It's cloudy. It's very murky. Mm-hmm. And then. Prince gets on the fucking just he comes out he's like he's like like slithers to the uh-huh, stage uh-huh. and he's just like oh. he just grabs the dude's guitar like uh-huh. one of the guys in the band uh-huh. and he's like this shit oh, he starts pulling plugs and wires out his wow 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 and he really does the fucking. <clears throat> And he's just like humping the fucking guy's guitar, like, uh-huh. oh, oh, and he does. He kicks the fucking stand, does a pull. This shit is badass, yeah. bro. I don't even the song. It's just like do 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 do. And I'm watching this thing mesmer. If somebody's with a camcorder because you can see the um the counter tape going uh-huh. and, the, and the tape as well. I'll I'll play it backwards. It's, we don't get in trouble for it. But uh-huh. what a badass footage. So I love when the internet does gives you something to yeah. go back on. Yeah. Right? Pretty cool. Michael Jackson, James Brown. Man. Nice. All right. And Prince. Never thought that that even happened. Like, no. 
So I wonder what that concert was. It was probably pretty fun. I can it imagine if it was th- anybody that was there. <clears throat> it's one of those, I'm not washing my clothes anymore. <laughs> I know, I know. You gotta wash your please, you gotta, please go wash your clothes. Go wash your clothes. Please go wash your oh. damn clothes. So last week was pretty fun. We had a great time. That was a lot of fun. A lot of fun at the recovery room. Shout out to Regis and uh, what was the young lady's uh, name? Christy. Christy. They were really fun. They were a lot of fun. And we had a lot of fun. Uh, a ton of uh, copyright infringement. Uh, <laughs> they just kept fucking sending yeah, me yeah, emails yeah, yeah, like, yeah, "Sorry that. guys, sorry guys, you yeah. can't." Yeah, no worry, no worry. I was like, "Listen, man, we're not copy. We don't. We're not saying it's ours. It's a yeah. live footage." And, and yeah, I just got to get a little better at learning how to post it the right way with you, you not claiming anything. You, there's a way you supposed yeah. To, there's a way you supposed to put some words in. There's it. a way you're supposed to acknowledge it. And because we we didn't do it like we didn't post it live. Yeah, I think that's not. It. For the most part, it's not an issue. Oh, okay. I, I, I think. I, I don't know. It just means you don't get any royalties <coughs> over it. So, ah, but so we don't get any pennies from it. So what? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. The six cents we would have gotten from that. Uh, this yeah, thing, from that know. post. Uh, the watch uh, recording worked well. Did it, it really? Worked. Yeah. All that vo- all that audio was from my from watch. From your watch? Yeah. That I, nice. had, I had in front of us. And I was able to pull that audio, which was much clearer. Mm-hmm. And if, if you play the tape by itself, it's just... Plates clanking and yeah. you yeah, don't yeah, hear yeah, anything. Yeah, yeah. But but the audio from my watch was impressive, and it actually went directly to the cloud. So it it doesn't stay on the watch. Doesn't stay there. It okay. went right to my cloud, which was pretty funky. Funky. Look at that. Technology. Look at that. Look at those options we Technology. have. Technology. Look at those options we have. How was your week? Well, it was pretty good. Uh, so Super Bowl went off without a hitch. Uh, kind of. A lull. Uh, it 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 happened. No, like it just, wasn't really a lull. It was it was it was exciting. Yeah, it okay. was exciting. You, I think your you your prediction was a little close. Was very. Close. I was pretty close. You I said forty one twenty. It was forty one twenty one. It was thirty one thirty one twenty. Yeah, something like that. So yeah. I was ten points away from. I was very close, just in the wrong integer. Not bad. Not bad. Um, not bad at all. I think the numbers are in. I think this is one of the highest uh, viewed. Uh, Super Bowls in recent really? history, yeah. Well, I th- I th- I think the longer we keep taking po- more people have TV, more people have, you know, like views. I mean, this is my mom used to have a Nielsen box. Okay, my mom. Oh, did she really? Okay, yeah. she had a Nielsen box, and I was like, why'd you? Why do you have this? What do you? She said, well, they said if you participate in this, you get some extra channels or whatever mm-hmm. else, and she did it. And I was like, yeah, but this thing is like, it's just like tracking every time you press on, every time, right, you, switch, right, right. Every time you switch a channel, every time you, it's, and it was a Nielsen box. I never saw one until she had it. Okay. And I was like, okay, well, that's fine, but you watch, she watches soap operas, and that's mm-hmm. it. Never changes it. So I'm like, they, they, you must be a boring catch. I don't even think they need, do they, do they even need a box? I don't think now you need no. it. I think, I think the remote control does it, you know, the actual box itself should be. What the cable box? Yeah, you mean? I mean, if you have cable, I don't know. if you not <coughs> cut the cord by it as of yet. Uh, yeah, interesting. Um, uh, I I I adored the halftime show. Did you? I, I didn't see it. I really uh, enjoyed uh, Shakira and Jennifer Lopez. Yeah, a lot of people said that they that it was a it was a good halftime show. Really choreographed, uh, very well, uh, uh, very well choreographed. Mm-hmm. I will say, very exciting. Okay. And I don't know about the commercials. I didn't. I didn't get the the vibe from the commercials. I didn't. I really wasn't paying attention that much to yeah. any commercials. So only the one commercial with the kid with the blonde hair running through the city. Uh, uh. So and it prelude every commercial before as the game progressed. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm sorry. Coming up to the Super Bowl, they kept showing this kid with a football spinning through oh, broadcasts yes, and so forth. Yes, 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 yes. And when the game opened, he came. He out comes out through the, co- the commercial. Yes. Came okay, out with yeah. a bunch that of was old cool. kids. Yes. That was cool. I really enjoyed that, and that kid's got his fifteen minutes of fame. Oh my god! Yeah, can you imagine? I mean, all those kids. Get I'm sure his fucking Instagram field. is like on fleek right now. All the. Hey, you guys got to stop me. I am a victim of my own technology. I am clearly a victim of my <laughs> Tell own us, technology. Tell us, hey, I'm doing something. God damn it! I felt something just jab me and was like, "Hey, you, you want to?" Because I stuck my hand between the chair and the table, and it. I must have pressed Siri and oh, okay. activated. All right, that mofo. Uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. Those nah, kids, those cool. kids must have gotten a nice, you know, oh, boost that's of a uh, rush. Yeah, oh, yeah. God, I'm in, I'm in the great. Super Bowl. I'm, I'm. I did a. The kids should come out with an album or something. A record. Feel good for all those kids. Yeah, 
Was, and there was another, and there was another uh, group of kids that uh, gave at the ball for halftime. I think. Oh, after is that the, right? After the halftime show, I, think I didn't see another, that. Though. There was another kid or another group of kids that came up after the halftime show. Um, I was um, pretty much stitching myself back together from those peanut butter shots. I, I was. <laughs> Oh, really? Yeah. I was pretty fucked up. Oh, man. Yeah, I was pretty banged up. Uh, not banged up, but subdued to the point where I was like, um, I could just kind of coast out. Here. Interesting. Okay. Uh-huh. I was supposed to go back out with the fellas, and everybody was like, yeah, you're coming, you're coming, you're coming. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no. I just decided to sit and chill. Okay. And it really kept me nice and mellow. It was really nice. I really well, I sat, and ch- I sat and chilled. I had myself a couple, a couple more beers that I had at the house. Uh-huh. Uh, but no, I didn't. I was like yeah. fine. You was up, yeah. Yeah, that was fine. Oh, the halftime show guy. was you're, a good. Yes, I am. You're a bourbon whiskey brown guy. The halftime show was a good. It, it was actually good. Well, the way it did that because, you know, my son was a little fussy. Mm-hmm. You know, and so this was a good time to put him to bed. Mm. And then my wife can enjoy the halftime show. Yeah. You know, and she said, "Oh, it was a good halftime show." And I put him to bed. By the time I came back out, a second half. So I was like, "Oh, okay, oh. this is great." This worked out perfect. Good, good, good. I, I'm one of those. I could give two shits about the halftime show. I could care less. Yeah. I, I could, I, okay, fine, do whatever. The only halftime show I ever watched uh, in full was when Prince did the halftime show. Mm, that was uh, a good one, too. Some time ago. Yeah, it wasn't that long ago. Yeah. Was it? Before, it was obviously before he died. <laughs> what, I would think so. Six, oh, seven years? Five, oh, six, no. Mm. Before that, like, so I, I, I can't remember. I can't remember. Well, Giants and uh, Ravens, no? Was it? I, 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 well, that was you Tampa. might be right. That was Tampa. I was in Tampa. That was 02. Okay. O, 01 or 02. And I was at Tampa with Fugu. I was uh, running there's, with those guys. There's a guy I know who has a, uh, who, has a who, uh, who actually follows this, who follows our podcast. His podcast is D-Rock Podcast. D-Rock. Yes, D-Rock Podcast. It's basically just him. Like, for every like every week, he like spits on so He gets real high and then Ooh. starts talking for 20 minutes. You can Ooh. tell his motherfucker's really, really high. Mm. But he's hilarious. He's a, he's a, he's a, he's a, he's a comedian. Shout out, D-Rock. And um, he mentioned something that I thought was kind of interesting. He said, um, you know, he talked about the whole Janet Jackson thing at the Super Bowl. Uh, you know, the, we kind of uh, like vilified her for yes. showing her nipple. And, yeah. you know, we, Janet Jackson was an enemy. And even though we had nothing to, you know, we didn't want to do anything to Justin Timberlake. Justin Timberlake was fine in that whole thing. But, yeah. You know, we vilified Janet Jackson. But he brought up something. He said, do you remember that a few years before that, Bruce Springsteen did the halftime show mm. and did this thing where he like slid into the camera and put his crotch in the camera. Ooh. And <laughs> he said, Bruce Springsteen pretty much cock-slapped the entire yeah. nation. Oh, yeah. And we were begging for more. <laughs> and then a couple years later, this black woman shows us a glimpse of her nipple. Yeah. And we go nuts. Wait, w- wow. It was nuts. It was, <laughs> and I was like, oh, that shit that makes perfect fucking sense. Now, I'm confused. Um... Janet Jackson's wardrobe malfunction was that the Super Bowl? Yes, it was a halftime show. Okay, why do I remember Little Kim holding her nipple up? Uh, you remember Little Kim holding um, somebody was what? holding no somebody was holding Little Kim's nipple up when she was at an award show. Oh, I, Little Kim had this outfit on where yes. she had like a breast was exposed, but she had something covering a flower her nipple. or something like one little flower, and somebody was like holding up her nipple. I can't remember who it was. It was somebody, little... somebody played with it. Yeah, someone weighed the fruit. Someone yeah. weighed the somebody, fruit. Somebody played with it. I was, huh. It was a bunch of women. I was there. I don't, I don't, it might have been somebody like Diana Ross or something like that. Oh, yeah. I, yeah I rem- yes, I remember something. It was of... kind of diva-esque. And yeah, something kind diva-esque. Of nice. that's, when wow. little, that's when little Kim was hot. Yeah, yeah. That's she's when... my, my. Looks like a Chia pet now. Oh, my God. It's just... All porcelained up. No, no, no uh, disrespect to the Queen Bee, um, but I don't even think the guys in Brooklyn recognize her anymore. I don't think I, her own crew. I don't. Her fucking pets probably don't even recognize her. Oh, gosh, she comes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, oh, Jesus Christ! Don't, don't do that. <laughs> oh man. Uh, so, so, um, listen. The NFL. Uh, I saw so much flack. Over San Francisco, hanging out at Club Live at the after party when the Super Bowl was mm-hmm, over, mm-hmm. they got into so much. I mean, again, this is the digital uh, beef of why are they out celebrating? They lost. Mm. You know? and, okay. And Shannon Sharp, of all people, mm-hmm. said he corrected himself by saying, "I wouldn't do it. Like me, mm-hmm. me as a competitor, 
I'm not hanging out and fucking partying with none of you fuckers. I'm going back to the gym and I'm getting my shit together. I pack my shit. I'm angry. I'm leaving right. angry. I'm okay. not going to hang out with you guys and party okay. and pop champagne with the winners. Okay. You know. Gotcha. And that's what Shannon Sharp was mentioning. I didn't see his whole in entirety, mm-hmm. but it sounded like he was alluding to the fact that this new wave of guys that don't care if they lose, you know, they just. Yeah, there's, there's, I kind of like, I wouldn't say I have to take issue with it, but it's yeah. a, there's a different. There's a different thing going on, like, because everybody makes, I think because guys make so much money. Yeah. A lot of guys, a lot, of, especially a lot of the big time guys, they actually have the same, like, representation, the same agents. Yeah. They're involved with a lot of stuff, like, outside of the, uh, outside of uh, sports, like, uh, you know, like, they do a lot of charitable things together yeah. and all that stuff. Like, like, they know each other outside of that. And it's very rare to see that, that little, uh, that, okay, listen, we might be cool, but for this time period here... I'm nice. looking to freaking slice your yeah, ass- annihilate slice you. your guts out, yeah. and I just and I I appreciate those guys who during that time period said no, I ain't your fucking friend. No, come right. over here and shake my hand. Right, right. God, and and that's the, like you know the Larry Burrs, the Michael Jordans, yeah. the, the those guys were just they were like I remember this one time I, there's this picture of like Larry Bird he's getting they're getting ready for a game and they're playing the the Pistons. Mm. Bill Lambeer comes over and shakes everybody's hands. He extends his hand out to Larry Bird and Larry Bird just. Yeah, just stares. I, at I love that. I mean, and that just, that that's the game to me. Like it starts there. It starts now. I really do believe, yeah. and I and I think the late Kobe Bryant was one of those guys who yeah. was like that. I mean, I, I think he he you know in the morning gave everybody that. I mean, in the yeah, he beginning said, of the game gave that that. But for the most part, it's it's no. This is huh. fuck you. Yeah, man. I'm I'm hoping you fucking die. Yeah. In the, this next uh, uh, the white line effect. Yeah, uh, exactly. Someone called it. Uh, I believe one of these when, guys. When it's over, I love you. Yeah, yeah. But, see uh, you later, see you right. in the gym, see you out with your kids walking a dog, whatever it right. is, you know, but damn, you know, uh, my, 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 um, a pretty, little, pretty. A, a little, a little, a little hatred for your opponent is kind of a, I think a good thing. I think it makes sports a little bit better. Yeah. I'm not saying like avid hatred, like, but just, no. just this, 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 no, you're not taking, you're taking food off of my plate. Yeah. Type of, type of idea. No, I know. I, I, you know, when I coached the kids in basketball, we played these tournaments and we traveled. We went to Houston, mm-hmm. we went to Philly, D.C., Las Vegas. And these fuckers would not get mad of losing. And I'm like, I come from the era where, fuck this guy. It's, you, you guys are uh, asking what their, uh, what their, um, at the time was, uh, the sidekicks were out back then. Oh, and it I was all saying. like okay. uh, aim. When you tapped you right, when you tapped your phone together. Yeah, and that and, you, and aim and was aim, out. Aim. Right. What's your aim? Like, what's mm-hmm. your aim? And these guys, blah, 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 blah. yeah, it was like an instant messenger version, like a BBM or which is now straight text. Mm-hmm. And these guys would be like friended. I was like, why are you fucking? This guy just whooped your ass. You know what I'm saying? And then they go back up to the room, and as long as they had the fucking video game, you know. Was yeah, Ron? Cool. Ron would bring the Xbox. He mm-hmm. packed the ba- extra backpack. I was like, "What's the extra bag for?" Oh, I got the Xbox. Put it in his room. Plug it all up. They couldn't give a shit less. They- I was like, "You guys should be fucking angry, punching walls. You should be pissed mm-hmm. off. You up here playing fucking video games. You know that pissed me off. I used to get really pissed off at that. We are, uh, we are uh, deliberately reducing our own testosterone. Ooh, maybe. oh gosh. As yeah. this uh, fuzzy thing. Yeah, it's, I don't know. It's the wire. I don't know if fuzzy, I buy a fuzzy, new fuzzy. one or something at some something point. Fuzzy, fuzzy, fuzzy. Hey, if you uh, guys go on Anchor and hit uh, contribute because you love Two Bros Podcast, you can help us get some new equipment. Boop. You can do it for as little as 99 cents a month. That's less than a coffee cart. cart, yeah. at the cart coffee at the cart. Yeah, it is. A, a month. A month. It's like a slice of pizza a out. month. Not even a slice of pizza. Today is National Pizza Day. Is it really? Why is <laughs> Sunday? <laughs> That's the dumbest fucking thing ever because no one would go buy pizza. No one's pizza. going out and getting a, a slice of pizza. It should yeah. be during the work week. I right. agree with that. I just saw them, I think, today. Oh, national today's pizza national, day. national sliced pizza today. I don't know why it's doing this. I, oh, man. I think I got some levels. The mic sounds nice. Check, Check one. one. Uh, 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 uh. Do, 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 do. Yeah, but uh, yeah, man. I mean, listen, the 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 um the games are fun. Uh, have you p- previewed or seen any of the XFL? No, no. I think I saw like five minutes of a game yesterday. Yeah. Not bad looking. It's uh, yeah, it's all yeah. right. Not bad looking. Looks like an extended season, mm-hmm. like a um something different. I, there's a lot more rules. Uh, okay. 
which I, you know, again, I'm not a fan of the football and its rules, and I don't know all the, mm-hmm. the but this has uh, the making of, well, I, can, I can equate it to, like, when the AB, when the ABA came out with this new... They started, re- started, could... Started the three-point line. To make it look more like the, uh, making it look more like the NFL? Is that what you're trying to say? Yes. Okay. Yes. And instead of doing what they did back in, I think, 10 years ago, mm-hmm. or when it first came out in 03 or whatever it was, over-promising it, making, showing right. commercials and doing all this crazy stuff, this just kind of slept under the radar and it was like, oh, by the way, if you got nothing to do next Sunday, yeah. next Saturday and Sunday, there's some, you can still watch some football. Yeah. I was shocked that the fans, the, the crowds were big, mm-hmm. uh, Despite what I heard on the radio today, they said the crowds were weak. Now, you're not going to sell out a whole arena and stadium. Well, they didn't, they didn't make... I don't think they made the whole arena available. I think they just made the bottom level. Yeah, it could be. Could available. be. I don't know. I don't know this. But what I saw was people out having a good time. Right. And enjoying some football. Like right. I, the Houston <clears throat> game yesterday in Houston, they had people tailgating. They had people outside. They had yeah. people... It was nice. It was like real football. And... Um, uh, they have these um, new. Um, they have some rules that uh, maybe you would know. The difference. They, they have a no when you kick the ball mm-hmm. in the in the beginning. Mm-hmm. Kick you, off. You can't run until the ball t- lands. You can't run. Oh, you can't okay. charge. So remember back in the days when we used to play. Okay. We kick the ball and when the guy grabs it, we run. You know. Okay. It's like that. As soon hmm. as the guy when All it right. grabs, then you go. That's one, uh, and two is uh, you can throw for extra points even if you made the touchdown uh, instead of the oh, kick. you can do a two-point conversion, yes. That's in the NFL, yes. But they have two, three, and five. Oh, so Distance. they have, so wherever you set up. The yardage. Okay. So uh, there's a five-point line, put it that way. Okay. So you can make another five points if you if you hit it from back here. Okay. You know, in the 20, I think it's the 20, 10, and five, something like that. So there's some little things in there okay. that, that people have, uh, can <laughs> seems kind of interesting. get interested over and you know, now, well, put it this way. The NFL has a three-point shot now. Like, I mean, there's like a, a three-point line. Like a, well, a the XFL. Line. XFL, the yes. XFL. The XFL. That's, that's yeah. interesting. That's interesting. So, shout out to uh, Vince McMahon. He's uh, really putting this thing together uh, you know, and, and doing it the right way. And it's interesting because when, you know, he first, when he, XFL first came out. Yeah. You know, he did it. And, you know, it, it wasn't successful. It lasted, yeah. what, two seasons? One season. One season. One season. Came back. But he always, like, as a marketer. He always like he he believed in that theory. Yeah. He believed in that the best time for football is right after the Super Bowl. Yeah. There is this huge gap in which if you introduce football, people will watch. Yeah. So, and so he like went back, I think he tinkered it, he found some new investors yeah. and maybe built it back up and then now reintroduced it and it seemed to be successful. I mean, from everything I'm hearing, it 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 went off went off pretty well. It went off well because it, it was, wasn't a, it wasn't a circus yeah, like it was correct, the correct. first time it came out. There yeah. was a circus atmosphere about it. I think that's kind of eliminated. And like you said, they've they've made some adjustments to the rules. So looks it, it, it looks real. It looks it looks it looks it looks like it's not competing with the NFL. It's a compliment to the a compliment. NFL. That's like, a, that's a, that's, a, that's a great way. You to know that yeah. that's what I got from it. Like mm-hmm. and, and and me being a spectator only. So one of, me and my wife kind of talked about it in the car after they come from church, and it was like, well. This will this will this will separate the people who like football mm-hmm. or people who like players. So my wife watches for Odell Beckham, okay. Saquon, and mm-hmm. woo, look at well, mm-hmm. he's a popular guy. He runs and he does, you know. And then she gets into the game more because right. of the players. Right. This is for people who like oh football. like football. Mm-hmm. You like the X and O's. Mm-hmm. You like the way it's played. Um, these quarterbacks that are you know up and coming or some of them that have didn't make it and, right. you know kind of got scratched off uh i hear the salary is very weak 50 grand or something for well and yeah, quarterbacks I mean, make six figures you're probably not gonna yeah i mean you're yeah. not gonna make a lot of money but when i look at okay so you have um you got kurt menifee you got mm-hmm. the real guy all the mm-hmm. same broadcasters doing it so it that's why i said it Feels real because it's something it's familiar. It's, it's got familiar, the familiar and, probably, broadcasters. And, and you got some network money behind it. If that's going to yeah. be the case, so. I mean, they had the the the, the Zoom cam, the flyover cameras, mm-hmm. the the they had all the equipment, they had everything out. The the, the I'm looking at all the costs, right? right? I'm looking at everything on what the sidelines. Right. I saw fucking tons of tables, computers, and 
It's it's mm-hmm. out there. I mean, it's mm-hmm. it's being played. So uh, kudos to the XFL for really giving football fans something to uh, lick their wounds over, mm-hmm. you know, lick and and find new heroes. I mean, find find maybe some guy comes out of this thing and gets a contract. You know, maybe so, somebody will. Yeah, somebody will. I mean, it it it, it, it inadvertently inadvertently mm-hmm. my mouth is uh, betraying me this morning. Inadvertently, it happens. Like somebody stands out. It's gonna be a handful of people that stand out, yeah. and they might get the opportunity to, to go into the NFL to make some uh, make some more money. Yeah, no, that's cool. It's money. really dope, really dope. I really like how they did this, um, and I'm looking forward to the uh, New York Renegades. I think is their name today. The Renegades. They play at two o'clock. They play today, right? They play today. Yeah, they play at two o'clock. Uh, um, the merchandise seems a little bit wacky. A little, yeah. You know, the colors are weird. The mm. logos are weird. You know, they look. Pretty circusy, you know, okay. like a like arena stuff. Remember, like arena okay, football, like football kind of had these weird, you know, guys <laughs> charging at you. And when you're so used to classic teams that have been franchises, right? You know, so that's taken some use to getting used to. Uh, kind of like the big three, you mm-hmm. know, where it was Ice Cube's thing. Right. Where, oh, okay, the three headed monster. It's not really a cool shirt to wear. You know what I'm saying? Right, like, right, right, right. It doesn't. It doesn't. It's not chillable. It's not not chillable. Well, I mean, it's just like it's like anything else. It's got to grow. Yeah. So. Yes. Yeah. Speaking of uh, merchandising, uh, the thought of uh, which seems to be a hot topic, and you may know more than I do. Uh, they said that uh, Tom Brady's only possibility is the Dallas Cowboys. Yeah, this is the only uniform he looks right in. Oh, from his facial, from his features, from him as a franchise. As a player and with a two-year option, that Jerry Jones would go nuts with, with with all the things he could sell, like all the toys. The toys, yes. Yes. So in a Jaguars uniform, that could not happen. Who would rush out no. for a Tom Brady? No. Jack, Jack, That's true. Sorry. You're right. So that, I'm just saying, yes. I'm using that as a. If you looked at any team across the uh, platform, Tom Brady, whether he wants to go out as a Patriot, you know, mm-hmm. and be a one, right, one team guy. It's one only team, team guy, right? Mm-hmm. right? One team. I think that's more admirable, you know, to go out with one team, you know. Yeah. But I don't know if it makes. I don't know well, how much money could you make. How I much mean, money could he make? And yeah. how, you know, what does he does he does he want to play? Would he want to play for somebody else? And yeah, you know, all of those things that he kind of like took for granted over the last like years of his career, in which huh. everything was like, like so, like he knew how things were going to happen. Yeah. Now he's to- totally new to him. You know, the yeah. schedule is different, and the, the way you go for training is different. Right. Right. And, you know, who you talk to if you if you need to have a certain thing for your diet and I all see. that shit like that and all that all that stuff becomes new, but 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 from what I'm hearing and again these are from other analysts and broadcasters and stuff like that uh, that he just doesn't get the weapons he wants because uh, they don't want to spend the money on receivers mm-hmm. and they want to make find receivers like diamond in the rough receivers right, right, and right, just right. stumble up on a guy like they stumbled on him you right. know. And they feel like that's the yeah. Patriot way, like, you know, make a player, mm-hmm. you know, make somebody, you know, that crazy receiver. Whereas Dak uh, asking for 38, 40 million saying, hey, and and Brady only asking for 30. Yeah. Well, shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, OK, you want 40, you want 38 million and we could get for the next two years, we could get Tom fucking Brady. And I think it comes with the fucking in it. Tom fucking Brady. Tom fucking Brady. <laughs> yeah, you get that? I, well, I, you, you sell the tickets and you sell the merchandise, like you said. He's not going to have number 12. It's okay. He's not going to have number 12. I, number 12 I, is that Tom Brady's number? I don't even know. Tom Brady's number yeah, 12. He's number not going to have number 12 if he goes to Dallas. Number okay. 12 is Roger Staubach. So that's not going to... Not going to happen. Not gonna retired. Happen. It's not going to happen. Okay. Um, you will piss a lot of people off. If that, if that ended up being the case, there would be a lot of people pissed off. Oh yeah, because I'm sure is it. I'm sure it's, it's like the NBA. They retire it, and you never it's, use it yeah, again. Yeah, it's right? like it's it's you know if somebody, you know, all of a sudden, you know, in Chicago, war number twenty three. Yeah, you know, this is like whoa, wait a minute, what the fuck's going on here? Like, who yeah, does no, this dude you, think he is? And you know, Joe Kim Noah, twenty three. Yeah, what, so what's going yeah, on? so that probably won't happen. Right, but you know, who knows? Who knows? Well, who knows? I, I, football guys, I, don't, I guess the number means something. Um, Quarterback spot this year is going to be interesting in football. Yeah, because a lot of dudes can change in a lot of spots. There's mm-hmm. a couple of veterans who might be changing uh, teams. Mm. Uh, Phil Rivers, there's, there's a lot of speculation he might be leaving the San Diego Chargers. He's been there all his career. Wow. Uh, Drew Brees, 
Uh, he's in the last year of his contract in New okay. Orleans. There's a possibility that he might go somewhere else yeah. or retire or whatever right, he's right. going to do. Uh, Ryan Tannehill, the guy who took the Tennessee Titans yep. to the championship game, he's a free agent, so do you want to spend the money on him? So that's, yeah, a lot of, lot of dudes. Uh, a lot of moving pieces we're this year. We're talking about Tom Brady. Yeah. Free agent. In- uh, interesting. A lot of moving pieces, which makes it fun, I guess, if you... Yeah, you know, no, it is. Yeah. It makes uh, a lot of fun. The speculation becomes a... Uh, you know, speculation in itself is another sport. Comes hype. Um, they, they released a list of players that will not make back to the playoffs again next year. And they felt that uh, uh, the Chiefs were not going to make it back. Not going to make it next be year. be like Philly and celebrate it too much and just... They're still living off of... It's going to be interesting. Uh, they're yeah. still just living off the last celebration and never made themselves viable again. It's interesting. It's always interesting to see what happens to a team after they win. Mm. Because mm. it's almost... Everybody will tell you that it's almost never the same. Really? Like, the feeling is just never the same. Yeah. Yeah, unless you get the same group and you got the same hunger. It's you, it's the hunger. It's like, it's like yeah. you, you kind of like have to add some pieces of people that weren't there. Yeah. And so, like, they kind of like have to re-energize you again. You sort of... So, someone said, I forget who it was, some athlete said that it's kind of this thing where you think you can turn it on. Yeah, yeah. You think you can turn that switch on because yeah. that's, what you, that's what happened. That's what happened last. when you did it. As, you know, you needed, you, needed to, you needed a big win, so you got yourself a big win. So now you think that you can, that's available to mm. you all the time. And, I see. And really it's not. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that seems to be a common theme where you see a lot of, play, you know, a lot of teams. That, uh, well, it's like we, I think we mentioned this before. I mentioned it before. When you go to that, Chinese restaurant and you order something weird that you never had before and it's so good mm-hmm. and you try to go back mm-hmm. and you can't get you it. Can't, it doesn't get, it yeah. doesn't, it's not the same. Not the same. You know, it's just that one time you ordered it or you ordered it with friends. Yeah. It was like, wow, this was so good. And then the next time it sucked. It's well, that's what happens to drug addicts. <laughs> what happens to drug That first high, oh, so that you first can never high get it again. is awesome. Mm. And you spend the whole enti- your whole Trying entire life chase that chasing first that high. first high. Yeah, Lamar Odom says that. Yeah. And that's all you get. And it doesn't matter. Okay, well, maybe. Maybe I need to sacrifice my kids. Yeah. Or maybe I need to fuck up this marriage. Or maybe I need to sell my house. Wait. Or maybe I need to live in this car. Maybe I shouldn't eat today. Maybe, yeah, maybe I shouldn't eat. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I should hang out with these hookers. Just maybe I should high. just, yeah, just, uh, just, this high has got to come back. Ooh. And it never comes back. Wow. Wow. <laughs> yeah, Philadelphia, uh, they said, was, they, they just... They got drunk off their own juice and they never came back. That's pop, but you know what? At the same time, it, that, that's easy externally. Well, yeah, when they that's don't make easy, it. Yeah. That's easy for that's easy for us to say. Yeah, I know. You yeah. know, we like saying things like, "Oh, they didn't want it," mm-hmm. or "Oh, they didn't just try hard enough," or yeah. oh, "They didn't care." They just, that's 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 that, that's really not the case. If you're yeah. a professional athlete, you you you're you're busting your ass to yeah. get to get shit. Done. Done. You know, it doesn't happen the way. And I'm sure you spent the entire season trying to get back there. Yes, you know, for the I'm, most sure, part, yeah. I'm sure you just say, oh, let's chill the first five games. Yeah. We don't need these. Dudes so don't do that. <laughs> nah, I don't think that happens. Dudes don't do that. Dudes are taking huh. some time off and they're healing their wounds. Yeah. And I guarantee you, like, by the end of what? Uh, football, it's uh, by spring, these dudes will be, Charged will be up. back training, yeah. you know, hitting two a days and yeah. stuff like that and mm. then getting ready for camp. So. Yeah. Well, speaking of Philadelphia, Uh-oh. drove down to Philly yesterday. Okay. Not a fucking problem. It, oh, Philly? Just no. Philly's a great ride. Phew, yeah. Like two hours. Like yeah, two like and a half. Three hours. Yeah. Maybe two and a little traffic. No traffic. It was Sunday. Oh no, I'm Saturday. Uh, went down to Seton Hall for a Seton Hall play in Villanova. Right. right. Um, and I tweeted. Uh, one half of two bros. Yes, here I saw that because they had a thing on the board, and and I was trying to get it to pop up on the board. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. So that's why I I tweeted that in there. Um, oh, so if you tweet, they might catch it and they put. Yeah, it on they the were showing people's tweets on there. Oh, okay, you know, nice. But, but they only showed people for uh for Villanova. They didn't show any uh, of the Seton Haulers. Yeah, uh, I know. I saw that. That one hashtag you did was nice. But haul, haul you you haul in. Oh, Hall in. Hall but, in, yeah. But that's their that's their Seton Hall. So that's their oh, thing. Is it? Hall in. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. I thought you made that. No, 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 no. I take no credit for the oh, Hall great. in hashtag. Hall yeah, that's Hall the Seton Hall. Great win for great win for Seton Hall. Oh man, what a game! Great win. What a game! And I'm to oh, th- thank God they did the t- ticket strategically because we were all amongst a bunch of Seton Hall fans. We were all in the same area. Well, they do that for college. <laughs> Boy, they needed to. Yeah. Because it got. It did got it really. Re- I was telling all, I'm telling all these people, and I'm like, yo, y'all, y'all better be ready, man, because, uh, you know, we, we got to go outside, That's man. Philly. We got to get to our cars, man. We in Philly, man. Boy, they, that place, 
Um, that was my first time at the Sixer Arena at the okay. uh, Wells Fargo the- uh, Arena. That am, am I mistaken? Is that like in the hood? No, that's all three of them are together. The the Eagles, the same parking lot is the same for all okay. three. I, the, this is, this the might Phillies, have been like a while back then. Okay, the Phillies, uh, the the uh, um, Lincoln Stadium. Okay. for Philly mm-hmm. and the and the Sixers is in a triangle. It's, in a, it's, it's the spot. best okay. thing I've ever seen before. The parking lot. It was a big tailgate. Everywhere. Okay. It was insane. These people were fucking tailgating for college games. I mean, the beer was flowing. It was just Ooh. free flowing. I was like, you guys are fucked up. You guys, are, they were shitty. They had all Villanovas on one side there. Woo! Mm-hmm. Pissing all over the place. Everything. That's Philly, like, man. Philly, like, Philly is like, it's, it's... No, it's not in the hood. It's, it's outside. So you're staring at the city itself. It's okay. like on the outskirts. I'm it's, thinking of something else then. I'm thinking yeah, of, you're thinking, thinking, you're thinking, thinking maybe like Baltimore, else. like how... Maybe I'm thinking of Temple. Oh, so Temple, they, they see a I see a sign for Temple University, which is more in North Philly going okay. towards that way, which was, uh, I wanted to go... To uh, Soul Fed, which is a, a, a Instagram uh, guy we follow, Soul Fed Restaurant. Okay. He has a, um, a, a soul food kitchen in North Philly, okay. 17th Street. But uh, <laughs> man, what a win. But let me tell you something. At this arena, the Wells Fargo Arena, I'm going to give them all their props for their intro. Mm-hmm. When Villanova came out, mm-hmm. I was, my jaw was open and they had pyro. They had oh, really? fire shoot out of the fucking ceiling. Where to the point where you felt it, it was like, oh, <laughs> fire, fire. I mean, pyrotechnics, that's some badass shit, man. That shit was like, me and my wife were like, oh, sh- feeling all warm and shit. It uh-huh. was like, oh my God, this is serious. And they projected the names on the ground and everybody's, it was so fucking badass. Uh-huh. But um, what a great win. Seton Hall had not won in 26 years uh, in that building and um wow. and twenty years hadn't beat uh Villanova. Yeah, Villanova, something like that. And uh and shout out to uh Mamu Kashavili um uh from the uh Seton Hall Pirates gave us a gave Street Equities a shout out. He wore his oh, hoodie nice. that I made for him. Yeah, I made him his hoodie from his country Georgia. Okay. He's from the country Georgia. From his country Georgia. Yeah, the country Georgia, not the state of Georgia. Not the state. Okay. Mm-hmm. Georgia in yes, I know in uh, Baltic Sea, yes. whatever the fuck that is, <clears throat> and uh, gave us a shout out. We made him his own shirt, and he talks about and said, "Yeah, Street Equities helping me with my clothing line and my brand and stuff." So that was pretty cool. Nice. Yeah, we love the little small kudos. Although mm-hmm. in the replay, I didn't hear it. They just said it on Instagram and so okay. forth. But, but I see the interview, and he's wearing the hoodie. He loves that fucking hoodie. It's like I made. I more than ten more. You know, like nice. Love him. Yeah. So yeah, man, lots of fun, and then got back no problem. Uh, trusted ways, you know, to get us back home quickly and safely. Where'd you eat? Did you eat at the arena? Or I ate eat? at the arena, okay. and of course I had a Philly cheesesteak from it good? the arena. It was amazing. Okay. I was certainly impressed. I thought I was going to get dog food. Mm-hmm. I was like, come on, man. I was like, I asked the girl at the counter. I said, listen, I'm from New York. I showed her my license because like, mm-hmm. I bought a beer also. Uh-huh. I said, I'm from New York, and I know there's quote unquote places down here to get Real cheese steak right. here. Am I you okay here? Shit. I said, am I okay here? And she was like, you fine. She was like, trust me. And we do it the right way. I said, mm-hmm. okay. How? She said, the cheese goes on the bread first. Then goes the, the chop, you know. Mm-hmm. And then we put the peppers on. And then, you know, she did it. And I'm going to say I was not disappointed. Okay. And uh, I even took a fork. Well, let me see, let me go back a little bit. <laughs> I took a fork because I was, first of all, I had a white hoodie on, mm-hmm. Seton Hall hoodie on. I was like, oh, man, I can't screw this up. But the seats, I felt like you the other day with your ass hanging out. It's like your, hanging out everything? Man, the seat was this big. in in, in, people in, in 1940. Oh, man. What a jip. I was like, yo, wait, hold on. It's like the seat just took my wallet. Like, <laughs> fuck. Got up while it was gone. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> oh man, it was so bad. I was like, wait a minute, is this just because we were in the cheap seats? Like we were up a level. Uh-huh. And my daughter was down with uh Miles Powell's mom mm-hmm. and she was, you know, the two of them texting each other. Oh, you come down here, we have two more seats. I, I was like, listen, man, this is where my ticket says, this is where we are. Get comfortable. I you know, I'm that way too. I I, I this is where we are. I'm gonna sit here. This is what I got. This yeah. is this is I'm 
And actually, I'm good. And usually, if sometimes like higher up is like a better place to, to you can see, see the whole game. Yeah, you can yeah, see yeah, the yeah. whole game. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. I'm not actually in basketball, like because you got to see the back and forth. You got to see the to and fro. You got to see the. Yeah, we noticed that when we're very close and you're behind either the goalpost, it sucks, or there's a lot of good angles to get. And it's not always that close, or even that floor level is not yeah. good because you don't see the whole you don't game. See any, you don't see the whole game. Yeah. yeah. So you wind up looking at the monitors anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, this one wasn't bad. We were diagonal. We saw the whole game. We felt the flame from the mm-hmm. pyro. It was fucking awesome. Uh, the refs, for sure. Look, I'm not going to say that they home cheated. Cooking? Yeah, home cooking? A little home, little home court advantage. You okay. know, I'm like, dude, man, take off Jay Wright's underwear, man. You know, <laughs> I, I know he's handsome. I know he's GQ. But listen, man, he's not going to, you know. But Jay Rice made a career out of dog and referees, so he's yeah he's he's from yeah. that he's from that school. But oddly enough, um, with the win, with it being historic, with twenty mm-hmm. years and history and all that, not one ESPN coverage of it. Oh, oh really? None. None. Really? None. We watched all night. We watched this morning. We sat and watched. We said maybe it'll come after the uh, the MMA. Fu-. You know, I yeah. watched the whole. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sport. Wow, so no mention of it, huh? No or very little mention of it. it. None. Not, I, only on a ticker on the bottom, that's it. And the Duke uh, NC Right, the Duke NC, took NC game took over. precedence. Yeah. Even though, NC is, even though North Carolina's not even ranked. North Carolina's nothing right now. Cole Anthony, God bless him, he's They're back. It was now, granted, it was a good game. It was a great game. It was a great looked, game. I saw the, I saw the recap of it. This was the, I mean, I think this game was just as... I was like, well, was, our game was pretty good. electric too, man, and... and you know, you take the lower seed, I mean, the higher seed taking down the lower seed. Mm-hmm. You know, that's what you want in a conference. Yeah. Um, so they just got no love I, for whatever reason. Yeah, yeah, maybe. On on Fox Sports, uh, the show that, that played it, they mm-hmm. talked about it. Okay. But it didn't hit Sports Center. It didn't hit Sports Center. didn't hit Sports Center. And they went around the whole. I, I specifically watched it because I was like, all right, let's see how they say it. You know, like, how does it go? Mm-hmm. Nothing. Not one mention of the big. A lot of times you got to get the, um, like, when they, like, break off to, like, a group that is focusing on basketball yeah. or focusing on the NCAA. Yeah. And, 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 and they'll talk about it and they'll probably give it pub, but probably, like, on the general, like, ESPN show, they'll well, show you, like, well, I mean, some highlights the, and stuff like for that. For the fact that they covered uh, San Diego State, which is, Playing, mm-hmm. you know, undefeated or whatever. They uh, Butler. They covered all the top yeah. games. Yeah. And no mention in the Big East. None. Not, not no no Big East. So I felt a little snided a little bit. Only because I follow them and uh, I'm riding with them. You know? And they also and there was also one, one thing I noticed. They gave a lot of uh, they gave a lot of time to the MMA too. They gave a lot of time oh, to. So speak of this. Uh, yeah. And so that probably might have cut into it. You know, I think I think they're trying to go all in with their. Not all in, but I think they're trying to. They're getting involved. They're trying to get a little bit more involved yeah. With, yeah. The, with their with their MMA commitment, which is which is you know which is good, but is, it, it means that something else gets cut, and that's probably why you didn't see that. Uh, well, no, well I understand. Highlight. I mean, to me, ESPN is a sports channel, so mm-hmm. it should talk about all sports, mm-hmm. it, racing. It should have ping right. pong. It should have right. fucking slam ball. It should have Here all this go. other stuff. The you know? Yeah, <laughs> right. The Ocho. <laughs> it should have all of those things, mm-hmm. and it should have. It should. Sp- Talk about all the highlights of them, which to me said eh, maybe it wasn't that big of a deal for everyone else. You know? Somebody made a decision. So, Somebody right. made a decision. To That's say, all I'm saying. Oh. But you well, think, I'm from California, so I don't really give a fuck about what happens. But you on think East Coast of the, if a team that never won in 20 years, you know, some, that has some kind of a backstory, that would have moved it. That would have moved the moved needle a little up, bit. Yeah. Just for a sec, even if you gave it five seconds of, mm-hmm. a, of a preview, and I, I only attribute it to that there was no big big shot, there was no big buzzer beater, there was no. Bam. Oh, there was yeah. nothing yeah. exciting about it. It was just a dog fight. Mm-hmm. It was just a pure dog trading points, and that's it. It was nothing spectacular about it. So, eh, kudos. But kudos to uh, Seton Hall Pirates. They face Creighton on Wednesday. Don't let down. Don't let down. They got a tough schedule ahead of you. So, um, yeah. So that that's it's been exciting for me. It's been exciting for watching the Knicks play again. You oh know, yeah, has it been? It has been. It has been. They've won four in a row. They fired uh, the GM Mills. God, thank God. Oh, <laughs> thank God. <laughs> I mean, at some point, you, you know, it's like, dude, you know, mm, we have a moral obligation to the people here. Yeah. Uh-huh. 
and and from what I heard of Steve Mills, he's a class act. He loves the game. He he he's a, a consummate uh, uh, executive. Uh, he just. I think it's what everybody thinks is his hands are tied, hands tied. and he doesn't have the yeah. ability to move around like yeah. he wants to or or would like to. But, man, I think you have to at some point. But I am not in favor of them hiring this guy who's never had this experience before. He's an agent, And right? he's an agent. So he has player. How, how are they going to manage this? He has players that he looks after their interests, and they play for the other teams. So yeah, like yeah. Uh, Wiggins well, and and all these they, guys, they've done this in other sports. Because in in baseball, the Mets GM is a former agent. I just and heard so this. it's 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 an interesting. I mean, it definitely is outside the box thinking. Yeah. Um. But once again, if your hands are tied, your hands are tied. Yeah. So. Well, then give a guy like me that job. Like give give a guy like you know give a give a Eddie. Uh, yeah. Right. With, with Big Goldberg. <laughs> yes, I use that often. <laughs> Yeah, give somebody outside, really outside the box that, or the, or the, at least from maybe the the well the youth. From what I remember, I, it, it's I don't follow basketball that much, and it's been a while since I've like followed the Knicks on a regular basis. Okay. But I remember the last time that somebody was in the organization who actually had the mindset of of creating a team with Donnie Walsh. And building with Donnie Walsh. Yeah, Donnie was Walsh. destructing his his his. He said it. He said the first thing we got to do is we got to get out of these bad contracts. Yes. We got yes. a bunch of bad contracts that we got to get out of. Yes. And we got to, you know, we got to bite the bullet for a little bit. But the, our number one priority is getting rid of these yes. bad contracts. And number two, what's going to hold us down is we're going to have to, like, take some, some veterans who um, are, at the, are at the end of their uh, mm-hmm. uh, end of their contract. But, you know, hold on. Grab these guys and maybe we'll create some value for them so we sure. can get some draft picks. Blah, 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 blah. And he had a, and he had a five-year plan. Yeah, he had a five-year plan, and and so I think after two years he got fired. Got or something fired. Like that. I I don't know how the, well, but Donnie Walsh was the only one that I remember in in my era of starting to learn how the back worked, like yeah. how the back office, like wow, mm-hmm. that's a job, like wow, this yeah, is, somebody's responsible for this. I thought just owner, coach, and player, yeah. and then you know learning the backside of the business. Was pretty interesting, but uh, you never know. I mean, but it's been exciting for the fans. I mean, at least, especially with winning on the road. Yeah. Uh, using what you got, we got Mo Harkless back, a New York Queens kid, St. John's one year. Uh, played against you know Ron H. Mm-hmm. You know he played against them. Now he's a veteran. He's eight years in the in wow. the league. Played on a few teams. Played on some playoff teams. Mm-hmm. So he can bring that energy back to him. I'm only fearful for him that he has to be in New York with all his friends and family who want to come to the games and beg for tickets and yo my man my man my man my man people don't realize how much of a distraction like a pain in the ass that's that is. got to be a pain in the ass you know it's especially yeah cuz like you know unfortunately a lot of people think you owe them something and uh <laughs> so, yo, well, remember like, remember I used to cut your hair yes. back when you <laughs> remember I can imagine <laughs> Give me that two that... free floor tickets on the right I can imagine that's going to happen to him. I mean, you know, I'm sure it's a dream come true, but I'm sure it's a pain in the ass. Yeah, like, he's got to get another phone. Yeah. He's got to get a I'm phone. I'm sure. Now. I'm sure of it. I think he even, uh, it, uh, I was on his Instagram because when he was back over here, uh-huh. and um, when he was at uh, Kent School up mm-hmm. in Connecticut, I mean, kid went to Forest Hills High School with, uh, with a couple of friends, and Ron and them played against him. They had a great dad, that same era, and I can't believe, like, they're calling him a veteran, you know what I'm saying? Veteran. Like, veteran. The veteran. The veteran. The veteran. Very interesting. We shall see. That's, that's, that, that's a great, you know, a lot of times we forget that, that that is an accomplishment. Yeah. We sometimes think, we jump, you know, we say if a guy's going to play, well, he's got to be the superstar. Yeah, he's yeah. got to be the sixth man off the bench or whatever. We forget that there's a role for that dude who comes in and does his 12, 15 minutes. Yeah. And you can make a great career for yourself. Sure out you of can. That. A great, sure. reliable a career, you can make yourself a lot of money doing that. You can have you 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 have a tremendous reputation usually in the league Indeed. because a lot of people look at you as a hard worker. You can you can fill you can fill these spots uh, yeah. here, which is valuable. And a lot of times we forget that that's an actual that's a thing that you can become. Yeah, that's a thing. You know, yeah. some, we forget that if you ain't the star, then well, that's it. I just don't want to. I just don't want to play anymore. So no, I don't go like that. Yeah, and I, and I, and I guess you know a lot of people. I mean, he was a first round draft pick, so mm-hmm. I mean that that in itself. You know, you go first round, you went 15 or 12 or something mm-hmm. to, to Philly and then got traded, whatever. 
But still, he's got made himself a healthy career. It's good to see, you know, a kid from around the neighborhood, you know, make right. it and, and through all the hoopla and bullshit. I always thought that there, should, there should be three rounds in basketball. In the draft? Yeah. That's it? Just one, two, and three? I thought there should be three. Oh. There's only two, right? No, there's like... Eight or nine. Like, it just was, keeps going. It goes for like more. three days. It's like I thought there was more. In basketball? Yeah. Yeah, the draft goes pretty pretty deep. Fifth round guy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Five rounds. Why am I under the impression that there was only two rounds no. drafted in, in basketball? No. So uh, where, did, where did Justin Foreman go? He went second he round? Went second round, yeah. Second round. Number 80-something in the second round. Now I gotta look this up. Yeah, why not? Right there. I'm a ch- oh no, oh no, NBA draft. Yeah, right there. Third from the bottom. Second from the bottom. Oh, my glasses are. Bing, bing, bing. There are two rounds. Two rounds. Right. Okay. You okay. are right. Okay. Two, two rounds. rounds. Yes. Wow. I've always thought there should be three. Hmm. I've always thought you should have a third round. And I, I know what happens in the in the NFL. I think they have eight rounds. Oh, okay, okay. Um, but usually what happens is is that um. Okay, so usually after like the fourth or fifth round, mm-hmm. there's some guys who people think highly of who don't get picked in the seventh, eighth round. Right. They let them not get drafted, uh, and, then and then they sign them as the free agents. Yeah. So they get, you know, and apparently that's a whole another, like strategy. That's another strategy yeah, that involved strategy. in it. Yeah. Apparently, like, like that, that time when the draft is over... That's just as bad because everybody's on their phone and they're talking to, you know, okay, look, yeah. I got Teron, you know, I, I, I got Teron with me on the phone. Hey, listen, how about we, uh, you, we you come into camp for 75 grand? I, yeah. You know, what about that? And, yeah, because then you don't have to do the, well, you got to do the player minimum, I guess, but you, you have, don't have to, to sign him to a long term contract, him. but you want him on your team, so yeah. you got to give the guy something. And it's, a, yeah. you know, you could still negotiate. Okay, well, I'll tell you what, give me, give me 100 grand and, and uh, I don't know. Whatever, pay for my travel or yeah. some shit like well, that. Well, in the NBA with the G League, that's what they do. Like Morris Brown, you know, I mean, uh, he got his uh, um, Moses Brown mm-hmm. from Malloy. He got a two way contract with Houston, um, but they don't have a G League, so he has to play in Dallas. You know, okay, and then he wind up getting signed to the Rocket. I mean, to the uh, Portland Trailblazers. Okay, he still works out with the Dallas G team, and he goes back and forth. He goes back and forth. But but that in itself is draining, and and you have to pay for travel. You have to travel. You yeah. have to go back and forth. It's not taken care yeah. of. That's not gratis. So your salary or whatever you get, you got to get. The no, cash. you got you come out of pocket a lot, and you're living in bags, and you're living in gym clothes, yep. and you're living in sneaker boxes. Yep, you know, and it's a tough it's a tough crawl. Yes, you know, it's it a is tough pub crawl. Yeah, so yeah, man, that's pretty cool. You don't have dental. Don't <laughs> no, no dental insurance. <laughs> no dental. You can't get your teeth cleaned. Oh my god. <laughs> No, we give you a nice mouth guard, though. Right, we give you a nice mouth guard. Nice mouth guard. That you got to give back. Yeah. Hey, you got those mouth guards? <laughs> those <laughs> mouth guards give we gave you. Give me all those. Those mouth guards we gave you. Indeed. Um, I, I caught up on some um, really cool uh, flicks, as I normally do. Mm-hmm. It's Oscar time. I, I know. It's nice the Oscars. Uh, have you seen Joaquin Phoenix speech at one of these awards? He gave a, 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 a speech... During the Super Bowl, it was the same one of these awards. I think it was like the British, the British one, like BAFTA or something like that. Whatever it was, I, it's going to be awkward for him tonight, I think, because of that. Did oh, you yeah. see it? No, I didn't. I don't give a shit about awards. I know, but but okay. So what happened with Joaquin Phoenix? He gets up, he wins an award mm-hmm. for something, I guess for Joker or something, and he got up, and all you saw was everyone go. White, everybody's face turned super mm-hmm. white and their jaw dropped. He talked about uh, white privilege in Hollywood, mm. that the same five companies are here, the same people, and there's a bunch of talented people that just don't get the opportunities that we have. I'm one of them. I'm guilty. Mm-hmm. He blames himself. He says, I, I, you know, I'm guilty of, of be, making a successful living and I have this privilege, but I'm I, I can't help but have a brother next to me that's more talented than me and, and does versatile stuff and doesn't get the call, doesn't mm-hmm. get the without somebody co signing for him mm-hmm. and telling him this guy's great, mm-hmm. you know, you should look at him. And he said it's the same white tuxedo wearing MFers up here all the time. Okay. Oh yeah. Oh okay. yeah. <laughs> all right. Beep, beep, beep. He was like, you guys should be ashamed of yourselves. 
And um, we need to be better. We need to do better. Um, and this is, you know, it's humane. Humanity needs to do better. So he wasn't talking about blacks. He was talking about everyone, all races, females, women, everyone, different genres. He said, yet the only time, you know, this gets together and we gets recognized and it's this, mm. you know, this exclusive club mm -hmm. that you have to be in, he said, it's bullshit. And took his word, thank you, and walked off. I wow. can't, uh... I, I can't, well, to that sentiment, like I said, I, I didn't, I didn't yeah, yeah, see yeah, it, so it answers, but I, yeah. to that sentiment, I, I, I agree with him. Yeah. I, 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 yeah. I agree And again, I, I implore everyone to watch it themselves and get their own opinion from right. it, so you don't just take, said we said it, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But then I had the ultimate pleasure, oh, and geez. I'm going to say pleasure, of watching, you ready for this one? Go ahead. Morgan Spurlock's Super Size Me 2. Oh, I didn't see Super Size Me 2. Oh, I saw Super Size Me. Uh, John, I am going to say that this guy, I give him, I took my fucking hat off. Uh -huh. I thought Super Size Me was a stretch, but it was interesting. Mm -hmm. And it was like, yeah, no fucking kidding. If mm -hmm. you do this, you, you will, right. you know, no kidding. This piece he did here, the second one, it, and he calls it uh, Super Size Me 2. And I don't want to give it away because there, okay. there is a, there's a reveal in it. Okay. But he decides to open a restaurant. Okay. And they're like, wait, what? You're the super size me guy? Mm -hmm. You Hold on. We got Morgan Spurlock mm -hmm. since he opened a restaurant. I think he's up to something. Uh, uh -huh. You know, and they're like, and he exposes. I will tell you the category. Because we talked about this so many times about the infamous chicken sandwich. Mm. <laughs> This motherfucker went and opened a chicken sandwich restaurant. And 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 I just judging by this footage and video, mm -hmm. this was pre Popeye sandwich. Okay. Holy shit. From All right, but you can't you can't I know, you can't I, do I, that I, now. I can't, I'm sorry, but you, you got to go watch. You got to say it. No, but I want you to go watch it. I mean, uh -huh. I really I really want people to watch it cuz I don't want them to get the He just exposes the entire business from the hatchery. Mhm. Mm to the farm, and then the big chicken, they call uh -huh. it. So big chicken, like big pharma, and okay. big, big oil, and big... Okay. There's this super four family, Purdue, Tyson, mm -hmm. boom, boom, that have this whole shit on lock. Mm -hmm. And it's like, what? You want to grow chickens? Where? Well, who? And who are you using? Mm. What farmers? And what? No, you don't have... And he exposes the, um, uh, uh, the USDA... Bullshit. Uh -huh. No regulation. No. Uh, he exposes um, all the things that we think protect us. Right. That don't. That don't protect. That us. don't protect. And the words. Oh, we don't say fried. We say crispy. We mm. say you know all the marketing and okay. all this stuff. It is a phenomenal educational piece because he goes he and he does it himself. He he gets the loan from mm -hmm. the bank. He he opens a store. He buys an old Wendy's and. He goes to the fucking um, food and drug guy, and, a, and a, some chicken council calls him and is like, <laughs> he sends letters to every all the farmers. Mm -hmm. The farmers, now, this is the, the, the tearjerker part. The farmers who are, who chicken farmers mm -hmm. across America. This is America. They are in this thing called a tournament system, which means you have to, produ you, they're producing 10,000 chickens a day, like in okay. most cases. Raise them, feed mm -hmm. them, get them up, clean get them, them, for slaughter get, them up, get them up for slaughter, pack them, push mm -hmm. them out, next batch, boom, boom, boom. And they give, the, the, this big chicken council gives them a rating of, of where you are and then hands you a check and says, sorry, you only did this much, you came in lowest mm -hmm. and you're at 5%. Here's your check for $11,000. I mean, he's like, I should have got 22000 mm -hmm. for what I gave you, pound for pound. Right. Doesn't work that way. You get raided on this system. So once they found this guy working with Morgan Spurlock, okay, they cut him off completely. They shut him down. They gave him a third of his check, and it was like, "Yo, take it or you out." You know, like you don't even right. And chicken farmers across the country. He went all the way across the country, and of course, I don't know. You know, obviously, we get to see a compacted version right. of it right. in, right, in right, an right. hour. But he took a year. Just and had to take. Just he took had to take years. years. He right. took years to make this thing. He said it was twelve years since the last one. I mm -hmm. didn't even seem like that. 
But he went on this whole thing, and this one farmer that, I mean, put this, you know, put families out of business. These guys are like, look, man, I, I will spend Christmas with my family. It's, hey, we have Christmas dinner. Back to the chicken farm. Mm-hmm. Like he and they all are sitting there crying. They're like, I'm three generations in chicken farmer. I can't make. I barely make. I make four million dollars, but I'm in eight million dollars debt. Mm. So they're like, we they got us. They we can't get out of it. That's indentured servitude. This what they all say the same mm-hmm. thing. They all say we are slaves. We are slaves to this business because by trade, our fathers taught us this. This mm-hmm. is what we. This is what all we know. Even the kid's son, he's like. He's like, I don't. He's crying. He's like, I don't want this for my son. Mm-hmm. I want him. want him to do computers and be. Mm-hmm. Don't don't be this. I. But I would. The legacy stops with me. They made it. He said the corporation made it. Where this is not fun anymore. We can't live like you can't this. Live. You, you can't live. Well, you can't. You can't. You can't. You can't. You can't live. Right. You can't raise a family. You can't. Yeah. You know, pass it on down and, and shit it's like that. No Interesting. Lo- it's no longer part of American fabric. The corporations have destroyed and taken that from you. Yet. This is all they know. Mm. This is all they know. These people, the chicken farmers, and you know, he's like, "Yo, I own that." Boom, 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 boom. They're, people are looking at it like, "Wow, you got all this real estate. You got all these fun." He's like, "Yeah, but I'm, I'm, I'm four million dollars in debt." You know what I'm saying? And I only make this, this, so I have to do this just to pay break even. Right. I've been wearing the same clothes for the last six months, man. Like you know, like clothes. We don't buy. Wow. We just wear overalls, and you know. So it's a very interesting look at the chicken uh, business, and he, and the reason I say it was pre Popeyes because they did go to different um, locations to pick up chicken sandwiches. Right, 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 right. He wanted to come up with how do I come up with a healthy looking chicken sandwich, mm-hmm. but gives me uh, the benefits and you know and and he's opened this restaurant called Holy Holy Chicken. Okay. Total transparency. Mm-hmm. Uh, he says USDA. This is USDA approved, but it doesn't mean shit. It it says it. He on says his, it. Yeah, it says USDA it. USDA package- approved, but it doesn't mean shit. Right. He tells you all the mm-hmm. things on the packaging, and he goes, uh, "This chicken sandwich looks like this, but this is how they." He shows you on the back of the menu. This is the glue they put on it for the menu to look like this. Ah. He totally exposed <laughs> it. And at the end, he goes, and he and he he put the um the farmer. His picture, he's the French, you know, like mm-hmm. the Dave of the Wendy's. Right. He made that guy a farmer, his face part of the thing. You know, he drove all the way from Alabama and, and came. And it, it's a wonderful story. Super Size Me Too, okay. Super Size Me Too, it is a wonderful story. That sounds like wonderful. a monster. Yeah, it's pretty good, pretty good. That I really like enjoyed it. That sounds like, sounds like something that's worth it. And the next movie uh, for review, which is out in theaters now, uh, which I really... Um, Enjoyed, the gentleman. What's the gentleman? Matthew McConaughey. Uh, a bu- uh, Why does it sound familiar? Uh, what's it's a guy Ritchie Colin movie. Farrell. It's a guy Ritchie movie. Yeah. Yes. It's, guy, I like it's, guy Ritchie it's, movies. It's yes. like snatched part two. Yeah. I like guy Ritchie movies. This shit is badass. He has that stylized violence, and there's always like a there's always like a surreal thing going on. It's like uh, two smoking barrels. Two smoking barrels. Yeah. Same guy. Same guy. Same guy. It's lock, it's stock, two smoking lock, barrels. Lock, stock, two smoking barrels. Snatch. Um, what's the other one? That's the other one. He's, he's got a. He's got a couple of them. He's got a few. But 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 it, yes, that's it's in that same. It's in that same same vein. vein. Mm-hmm. Badass. Totally badass. Uh, even Hugh Grant. Hugh Grant plays. Ooh. It's a nice cast. Uh, I I really you got to see. Yeah, I do. I do want to see this that movie. One. It is such a badass. I I sat in the theater just by myself. <laughs> and really and just like wow this is a fucking badass movie it it just got it has the that british uh you know the badass brits mm-hmm, you know mm-hmm. guys up in brixton badass uh, uh dancer video. it's mm-hmm. fucking cool. it's cool it's a really cool movie i don't want to give too much away cuz in theaters right you now go see the poker yeah <laughs> it's it's all of that <laughs> colin farrell's role is fucking awesome dude he plays like a uh like an MMA coach, like a, okay. a, a fighter coach, okay. and he's got these crew of scoundrels that fucking go around. They rob shit, and mm-hmm. they, wear, they but they do YouTube videos, and they so they when they rob you, they film. They're making a video, okay, and they're singing a rap song while they're robbing you, and and they hide their face in the video, and they wear these funky sweatsuits, and it's fucking badass, man. The gentleman, 
Chester Snuck Under the Radar. I did not know this movie was Sounds a good. thing. Sounds yeah. good. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Really no, good. Guy Ritchie. I, I, I like Guy Ritchie movies. Man, man, I did not know it was that Guy good. Guy Ritchie. Uh, other than down, that, kick you know. Kick to the curb. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I'm, I'm back in the city this week. Um, All week? All week. All yeah. week. Uh, except for Wednesday, I'm in the Bronx. So, okay. Wednesday, I'm up here. Ooh, what? They shooting dudes in the Bronx. Dude, they just shot a cop. I know, place. like ambushed them. Like I think there was there was two Sitting separate stories. There's one dude who just walked into a precinct, <laughs> and then another dude who might have been I don't know, like, might have been the same group of people. Same man. Like, uh, shot him in the car. Shot him in the car. Jeez, Jeez good lord, man. I mean, I we got our issues with cops, but goddamn. Yeah, I'll put it this way: that won't solve it. I mean, that <laughs> well, that won't solve it. And guess what? Shit just got worse. They now, just, right. They just. just <laughs> Because now you got a bunch of angry cops. You know when you shoot, when you go blue, you know it's like, dude, they see red. And unfortunately, the dude that's coming home from work at eleven thirty at night and stops into the bodega to grab himself a beer and stuff like that gets picked up. He's gonna get picked on. Yeah. Wait, and, where and are you that's going? The sad, exactly. That's the sad part. You that's the right. sad part. The sad that's... part is the dude that's working hard. That's yeah. you know to you know getting off his second job and shit. Yeah, you know, just want to go home. Just want to go home, and who knows? Maybe he might stop and smoke a cigarette somewhere, or maybe he might puff a little something, maybe smoke a joint or whatever, yeah. and then he's going to get fucked with. Correct, correct. I I don't know what what they were thinking, but um, uh, our hearts and uh, prayers go out to that family who. Uh, oh, that's, that's sad. Yeah, it's um, sad. Tell me, it's something. Just you know, you hear that, and you you just want to like. Like, tell me, like, so, like, tell me, like, this is the dude. Tell me that, he was like, a maniac. Tell, tell me, me he, right. tell me that this, tell me that this cop like burnt down your house or, or so, something. Just give, can you give me something plausible so that I can say, okay, you know what, I wouldn't have done that, but, but I see where his rage. All comes right, from. I see where the rage comes from. Just like, just to be, to, just to be angry, and then, you know, now let's talk about guns. We're gonna have this yeah. discussion again and shit. And I'd hate for this to be over a chicken sandwich. <laughs> This is not funny. It's Why not did you funny. fucking say chicken sandwich? I don't know. I just tried to make it weird. <laughs> just tried to make have it you a little see, weird. Have you seen the new Popeye's chicken sandwich commercials? No. What are they saying? We're back or something? Like they, that? They're brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> they're brilliant. These motherfuckers are Popeye's. They took all of this hoopla, mm-hmm. and so now they made a commercial. And so now what you see in the commercial, what looks like, what it looks like Pandemonium. Anyway, are people who are making their these videos about the chicken sandwich. Yeah. And that's the whole damn commercial. Yes, I saw. I did see that. And they're like, "Oh, you guys are fucking geniuses!" Geniuses. Uh, when you go watch this video, mm-hmm. you will see the marketing company behind all of that. Okay. And Popeyes is their customer. And I swear to you, I, I well, well, how can, yes, how can I swear? How can I? Uh, I bet that this company that he went to. To, find, to make this sandwich? Oh, you're talking about Marcus, the Morgan yes. Stark movie? Yes. Okay, you said the commercial. Oh, I'm sorry. The movie, okay. Uh, the, the, the documentary, his documentary, he goes into these... Well, first of all, I did not know that uh, this place, he, he tells you where it is, mm-hmm. there's this whole marketing company that, that has a kitchen. Like, they're not just paper marketers. They oh, have they, a they, fucking kitchen yeah. with a chef, and they go, oh, you want to... What kind of chicken sandwich you want? You want jalapenos, mm-hmm. pickles, and they make this shit there... And then do the tests and acidity, mm-hmm. uh, all the good stuff, you know, which blew me away. I was like, wow, this wow. is real science in this. And they said, basically, it's like a lab, but it's a fast food. So she said, what kind of business you want? Oh, you want, you want burgers? You want chicken? You want both? Combo? You want? And she's pulling off the book. Well, this is the stats on, you know, how much meat wow. you need, how much this. How, oh, man, it's out in San Francisco, mm-hmm. uh, the company. Um, I don't want to mention. And you said it's the same marketing company that you saw on the because they the they, they they tell you they said mm-hmm. oh we they, we were responsible for the gordita uh, we was the Taco Bell uh-huh. like every campaign that came why did you all of a sudden sound Russian they that's how you they said say the gordita, gordita the is... gordita <laughs> the gordita that's Mexican not Russian sorry. <laughs> 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 But they were responsible, they were responsible for that, for it, for that okay. campaign, the um, the ciabatta bread fresh. Okay. Right? Oh, they, they, they show you like all these weird things that they were part of. And I was like, this smelt like the chicken sandwich phenomenon. Like it smelt like his whole journey to making this chicken sandwich to like, hey, well, was what we did it for the he, culmination. He only had yeah. one store in, in, in Columbus, Ohio, okay, which he claims to be the um. The testing capital of the world of Columbus, Ohio. Yeah, really. 
Yeah. Where they test, like, everything? Yeah, like, this is the trial city. Like, hey, put something new out, put it in Columbus, Ohio. Which, which then I watched King of Beers... And they were testing. And they were tested in Columbus, Ohio. And I was Ohio. like, "Where the fuck? We gotta get to Columbus, Ohio. We gotta get Ohio. to Columbus, Ohio. Be a part beer. of some of this shit." Indeed. So yeah, that, uh, uh, wow, what a phenomenon! But um, again, sad for these cops and whatever else is going on. Maybe five G. I don't know. Five G. The <laughs> 5G. frying people's brains in the microwave. <laughs> it's the five G. Yeah, yeah. No, I am in the city a couple of weeks. I'm in the Bronx on Wednesday, um, and I'm pretty much back in the city, probably. Forever. Forever? <laughs> yeah. Like, it's going to be it now? Yeah, it would, uh, new contract, new gig. Okay, new, so now you got to be there. Yeah, now I got to be there. Not too much No more working from home? I'll have my days have where I, days. Can, I can, I can kind of like far lay off, but then mm-hmm. I'll have, primarily have to just put that time in. All right, well, at least the spring's coming. Yeah, yeah. Looking the forward to coming. that. I mean, so far we got away with... So, so far, I don't like talking about it because we got a few weeks left. Yeah. And so it's... You well, know. we'll 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 find out very shortly. I mean, that's true. Look, what's gonna I, happen? I haven't been gonna dying happen. to start this snowblower out there. It's just like I'm gonna go start it anyway. Anyway, just to, yeah. Just, <laughs> you know, uh, if you start it, if you start it, and then it snows, it, you're gonna be the reason why it snowed because you hey. started the snowblower. I wish I was the reason why I won the lotto, but <laughs> that doesn't happen. <laughs> Who I, says I have that much power? I know this guy who's uh, who's from uh, Jamaica. His name is Hugh. Mm. And uh, fuel, like in fuel, fuel, yes. Oh, fuel. fuel. Oh. And every day, he says, "I'm thanking the good Lord that it didn't snow." Mm. And I say, "You know what? You're going to be the reason why it snows because mm. you keep talking about it." And all of a sudden, if you believe in uh, the like the gods who like pay attention to what people say, and say, "Oh shit, we didn't fucking make it snow in New York." Hey, Tommy, get on that, would you? <laughs> we got uh, to catch up. They need like twelve feet by the next uh, in the next two weeks. Yeah. Well, you know what? We didn't waste any snow days, you know, for schools yeah. and stuff like that. So yeah. somewhere along the line, they're gonna be like. The but the other parts of but the other parts of the country that got like is getting hammered with snow. Yeah. So like the middle part of the country is Midwest. Like, yeah. Uh, wow. I mean, but that's like. Well, that's like life for them. Yeah, yeah. That's like, 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 like that. Buffalo. Yeah. Like Buffalo and Niagara, up in those parts. I it's, mean, like it's gonna snow. That's it. Yeah. They have so those it's snow just, walls, like this, uh, these valleys of just snow, just like snow. corridors, like you just plow out away. Yeah, it's just a matter of, is it enough snow to cave in your roof? Ooh. Um, not fun at all. No. No, can't be. Because it's cold and you got to fix your roof. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, well, that's, that's say la vie, as they say. Say la vie. Uh, no point in talking about um, Trump's crazy statements or anything. Because he's Do crazy. We, yeah, because he's not he's he's, he's this guy is, is, well. First of all, he's he's Teflon because <laughs> now, like you know, there was no nothing, no collusion with Russia, and now he's not being impeached, and no, so not removed. He's 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 treating it like a damn victory lap. Mm. He's and that's the worst thing that you could have. Did he say a great win for the state of Kansas? Yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He actually, I think he took the tweet down. Actually. Oh, yeah. the great state of Kansas. Yeah. Wow. Which Kansas City borders? It, there's a Kansas City, Kansas, and there's a Kansas City, Missouri. Okay. You know, but this is Kansas City, Missouri. Right. <laughs> but still. Okay. I mean, geography helps. I mean, shit. But what, At least but, for the press. I but mean, people love it. I know. I and know. that's the reason why. People don't understand it. This is the reason why. Because it's like you and me. Yeah. It's some shit that you and I would say. Yeah. You, you and I, I would fuck up and say, oh, it's great state for Kansas. Right. Oh, fuck, I meant th- this. I meant Kansas. Yes, right. Get the blow over. Yeah, but, uh, but then nobody would, nobody would care. And now he's doing his fucking victory tour and whatnot. And he's just and got just, his feathers. He's got his peacock feathers out. He said he, said he did more for Christianity than Jesus Christ. <laughs> I'm perplexed. <laughs> At the audacity of this guy. And, and don't get me wrong. I, you know, I, I like anyone else, I like some things he does. I, like, I hate some things he does. But how could you do more for Christianity than Jesus than Christ? Than the guy who uh, Christianity is... Uh, like, hey! That is the reason why. <laughs> Fuck, I'm walking around in these sandals <laughs> and his robe for. And you? You? Who is this? You? <laughs> Peter! Peter! Who's this motherfucker <laughs> Send Judas down to John Trump Tower. Fuck with him for a little bit. Yeah, he's tough. Give him twelve pieces of silver. Did you see? Did you see any of the uh, State of the Union? No. 
He gave a decent State of the Union. No, I didn't. Um, I was afraid. It, 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 was, it was decent. Yeah. You know, it was decent. I, I saw like about a half hour of it. Um, brought out loves uh, some black folks because he yeah. kept pointing out some black folks like, like crazy. You know, the My little the, 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 the girl who um, the, the girl who's uh, going to get her scholarship now so she can go to a good school. Oh, OK. Um, uh, honored one of the Tuskegee Airmen. That I saw. Um, yeah. Uh, well, actually, I saw that. No, I saw that Nick game. Sorry. I think another uh, and, and that guy's um, apparently his great grandson uh, says he wants to go into space because mm. Donald Trump mentioned his space force, mm. which sounds like a great. Which, in all honesty, yeah, uh, yeah. sounds like a great idea. Sounds but like when he says it, it sounds stupid. <laughs> this makes perfect fucking sense. Yes, you need yeah. to have the capacity to do something in the regions of outer space because that's like the, the, the next level that we need to conquer. Sure, we sure. need to develop the technology to do that, blah, blah, blah. That all sounds great. But when he says Space Force, <laughs> it sounds stupid. Because we've made a mockery of the guy <laughs> so much. There's so many cartoons about, like, like, have you ever watched my cartoon president? Yes. And he, that yes. is it's hilarious. hilarious. <laughs> and he sounds so much like him. Oh, I think we should get this. Oh, do it. Do it. Because I said so. I mean, it just makes them look so foolish, you know. Um, but, you know, hey, we, we shall see. I mean, th- this is going to happen. This is one way or another. And it's, you know, if you look at all the junk in space, you ever see that thing, the website, junk in well, space? Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, there's a lot of shit up there. A lot there. of shit we, up there. We, we, we've kind of polluted. Uh, We're getting ready. Yeah, we're, we're but, moving shit up there. Just, yeah, but how I do mean, we use it to get? Uh, yeah, but that's now it's important to get. We need space sanitation more than we need a force. <laughs> like that's a new job. Oh, I'm a garbage man for the space. Space sanitation. Yeah, space sanitation. I wonder if that'll, if we'll look at that as a shitty job. How? Like how we look at sanitation dudes now. Yeah. Like you're always dirty. You just it's not. I mean, it's a good job, but we don't look at it as like a desirable job for you to have. If you were a Listen. if you were a sanitation dude in space, would we still look at you as like, oh well, you know what, you could have been a fucking teacher. We got we got to get your buddy Barry Seaton on here. Mm-hmm. Uh, he this this guy's like the general of sanitation. I mean, he's like the mayor of sanitation. Oh yeah, of New York. Yes, he's like full like wears got medals and shit like <laughs> the sanitation. <laughs> Make no mistake, the guys that I know, like all my friends that are, you know, I have a lot of civil service uh, uh, guys, mm-hmm. whether it's corrections, or, mm-hmm. and they they all like, I got off corrections, went straight to sanitation, best job I am, retire. Yeah. They retire with, they, these guys are making two and a quarter. Oh, no, it's They're a, making it's a, a fucking, great job. Yeah. It is a and great it, job. But what I'm saying is, is that the perception we have of it is that it is a shitty job. It ain't no fucking it's uh, not a James job. Earl it's, Jones and Claudine, yeah, you know, no, that, that job. No. You know, we used to be a shitty job, but man, these guys are getting like two hundred. Sir, grand. we do this all day, every day. Wow, that's a bad. Yeah, that's, yeah, a, that's, that's, a, a, that's a bad James <laughs> O. Jones. Bad. I'm sorry, James O. Jones. No, you did it good, actually. You think, just, it was, think it was all right, <laughs> sir? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do this every day. That was a great movie too, Claudine. Claudine was, oh, was a classic. Class. It's one of those movies that you couldn't do. You couldn't do that because the welfare roles are not the same. Correct as they were. Yep. You know, but it, it but it made a great it made a great point as to how like the welfare role sort System of like was broken. It, it was broken and it sort of like kept the black man away. Yeah, from a family kept them away from you the know. Family, and he yeah. said, he said, wait a minute, if I marry this woman, I want to make things better. Yeah, you're basically telling me that I gotta fucking take your money, and if I don't, then I'm just another lazy nigga doing this, and and so now <laughs> I'm back to the square one. And why the fuck would I do that? And hence, hence the absentee father role. Yeah. Of our community, and yeah. So this it became, and in many ways, it became beneficial to not have the father around. There you go. So all the um, social uh, psycho uh, analysis and all these doctors and all these people talking, you know, I mean, look no further. I mean, this is kind of exp- it's kind of easy explainable. You know why have we exploited? I'm sure that some guys like you know, fuck that bitch I ain't going. To oh yes, I'm, yes, yes. There's always going to be bad. Yeah, there's, there's always, always gonna the guy be- that. Bad characters in in, in every uh, in every scenario, yeah. you know. But at the same time, you know, you look at the the, the black family was a strong unit yeah. after the Civil War. Oh yeah, you know, it was a strong. You had a strong patriarchal figure. You had a strong matriarchal figure. There mm. was a focus on education. There was a focus on going to church. There was a focus on getting a job. Yeah, all of that. Going to school, and then, getting you yourself know, together, and being better, being being better. You know, we built our own communities, and all of a sudden, some you know 
rich white people didn't like it, so they told poor yeah. white people that, hey, this is the reason why you're poor is because these uppity Negroes yeah. don't have it, so you go get them. You go get them. And, and, and that, that's, you're that's, an uppity yeah, Negro. That started some shit. Uppity Negro. Our niggers are fine down here. Yeah. Our niggers are peaceful before you came around here starting toting all that freedom and voting shit. <laughs> it's funny, uh, at church today, uh, one of the... Um, uh, Pastors or whatever read some speech or whatever. Or no, actually, younger it was Young People's Day, and young people were speaking and mm-hmm. reading some litany. And uh, one of the, the pastors' daughter got up and said, "Look, we, we we don't we don't um we don't practice mediocrity. You know, everything is about doing it. If you're gonna get up here, it takes a lot of courage to get mm-hmm. up here and read. You know, then then help support these kids in being." Excellent, like being, right. you know, sp- you know, you get on me over pronouncing mm-hmm. things and and just having proper enunciation and mm-hmm. spelling and reading and writing, and I equate. I'm, the reason I'm going there is because uh, Meek Mills. I'm just doing a transposing of uh, of of worlds here. Meek Mills said something similar. How uh, in the black community, um, we were a lot of street guys were always raised that. Oh, if you you read, you smart nigga. Yeah, you a smart nigga. You you corny, you know. Mm, yes. So yeah. we have this. Uh, he calls it PTSD, you know, which he equates to. He says it's not just about Vietnam and war. It's the street war of having so much negativity and and death around you and and all these other mm-hmm. a- attributes of hood life. Mm-hmm. Some of it you brought on yourself, but some that's the only way you know. Right. So when you teach excellence, you know. That kid who was taught excellence, if he goes into the neighborhood, he's a square, he's a cornball, he gets kicked down the road mm-hmm. unless he's cool enough to smoke a cigarette mm-hmm. and flip his hat backwards and then go back to his mother and mm-hmm. you know and mm-hmm. be a a, a, a two faced or whatever right. or something like that. So I, I, that's why I was just going with it, saying that it's so hard. It's not hard to teach excellence. The harder part is for society to accept us being excellent. Your peers, your own yes, peers, yes. have to buy into it. Yes, and they're, if they're not as excellent as you are, you're the odd person standing out in the crowd. That you makes be- sense. You yes. become the person that's weird. Yeah, that you want to get a college degree, right? And you want to go work with the white man. And yeah, you want to go do the the with the man. You know? Well, we do, we we we, we got to make it an enemy because we, yeah, because we didn't because we didn't get it. Yeah, you know we didn't latch on to those to those. Uh, yeah. Opportunities, whether they might, you know, yeah, be fleeting yeah. And, and whatnot, but, but I thought we was, didn't. But you know, so I, if you do, then that means you're, you know, maybe you think you're better than me, you, right? Right. You know? This is the crabs in the barrel thing, yes. and I was just happy to, to hear Meek Mills talk about it in his fight for uh, uh, his new fight for equality and mm-hmm. justice reform and all this new direction he's going into and trying to, you know, speaking of Philly, you know. But it's just exciting to see that people, you know, are activating, you know, when all the, the bullshit that's out there, yeah. this, we just talked about, there are people actively doing it that are really trying to push the culture forward and push us to be better. We have to jump on. Have to jump we on. We got to jump on you board. You got to jump on it. Yeah, you're exactly right. We got to get on board with it or else we're going to be back at square one, you know. And I don't know about you. Yeah. I don't know. Of too many podcasts hmm. that stretch the realm of sports, movies, documentaries, talk Life. about some shit that happened with cops. Yep. Ended up with some chicken sandwiches, mm. meat mill. Mm. Come on, man. And we don't preach mediocrity. Mediocrity. Yeah, I'll, I'll get on you about that. Mediocrity. Mediocrity. Yeah. You're making me say fucked up words. Now, I don't know where you can do this at, but I know where you can do it. You can do it on two of those podcasts. Especially at episode 93. Peace party people, have a blessed week, but more important, be a blessing to someone else. Or fuck them. <laughs> Peace. Yeah! That's what they said. Hello.